So let's dive deeper. There's a Sufi story that enables a question to be asked. But before telling this story, there's an old story that in fact answers the question to be asked, but maybe in a paradoxical kind of way. And that old story is that story about that very pompous, arrogant and prideful king who insisted that everyone bow down with their heads on the floor in his presence. So one day when he called a great reception and he entered the reception hall in his flowing robes with great pomposity, everyone with their heads on the floor. But the king observed that there was one being dressed in rags, or perhaps the patched work robes of the dervish standing. And with great anger, he walked over to this being and said, only God does not bow down before the king and nothing is greater than God. Who then are you? And the old being answered, I am that nothing. And the story is about a young student of a great Sufi master who asked the Sufi master, Master, teacher, what is the teacher's role in life? And the Sufi master answered, he said, the master, the teacher, is within the world, but he works outside of the world, life. Life will reject him, but life is duty bound to obey him. He said, let me tell you a story. There is a story of a young man who had aspirations to do good in the world. And unlike <coughs> most of those who want to do good, he had no selfish thoughts about this. He looked not for aggrandizement or validation. He just wanted to do good. But then one night he had a dream and in a dream he was told that if he began to teach now he would be doing the world and those in it a great disservice because he would be disempowering them and they would become angry with him and reject him. But in the dream, he was told a secret. And he was also told that he could tell people that he had a secret that could not be told until the right time. So, the very next day, the young man told his parents about his dream that he had a secret that could not be told. And his parents badgered him to tell them what this secret was. But he, of course, refused. So in a way, they rejected him. They ignored him and they weren't at all perturbed 
when he left their household to go wandering. Now he found a job in town with a tradesperson and he was doing very well. But then one day he happened to mention that he had a secret that could not be told. And when his uh, employer insisted that he be told what this secret was, the young man was ejected, <coughs> thrown out from the store. At that time, a travelling merchant happened to be going by and asked the young man did he want employment. So gladly he was taken up and began to travel with the merchant to far off places. But then one day he again said that he had a secret that could not be told and the merchant again demanded that he be told and was refused. The merchant beat him and threw him out. But it so happened that just at that moment the Prime Minister of that land was passing by on a mission to seek a certain sign because the king was dying. And he passed just at that moment when having been thrown out, ejected, the young man said, I do have a secret that cannot be told. And these were just the words, just the sign that the Prime Minister was seeking. So he took the young man back to the palace where the king, the dying king, lay on his pallet. And the king said to him, are you willing to take over this kingdom? And the young man said, yes, because my secret is that I could not do good in the world until What is the end of this story? How does this first story give us, although paradoxical, an answer to the question that's asked? I cannot do good in the world until. What relationship does it have to the first story? Where are you now? Where do you stand in your relationship with life? Can you answer as the Sufi master did. I am in the world, in life, but I work outside of life, the world. What's the meaning of these stories for you? How would you end this story? My secret is that I cannot <coughs> do good in the world until...
piece outside it. It's in the first story. I mean, uh, and he said he the Sufi master said he, he was that nothing. So you have to be nothing. So that when you uh, you pour uh, on himself into what you giving out, it just comes from the universe. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Can't do good in the world until I'm out of it. Yes. Right. And I'm not blowing and pulled and pushed by it. So how would we end this sentence as spoken by this young man. I cannot do good in the world until I'm good to myself. Okay. And that's so please. Truth on which to rest. Is that true to myself? Yes, this is what we said. So why would that hermit say, I am that nothing that's greater than I am? What is that place? The place is divine consciousness, the total infinite source, God, the, the, the most pure. It's, it's, it's whatever, whatever you want to call it that is your truth. It's the, 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 the most pure place. Thank you, thank you.